Dear students, today we start with the sixth module. And the first topic in this module is induction generator. When we compare induction generator with synchronous generator or alternator, induction generator is a singly excited one and there is no field binding in the case of induction generator. The medium of power conversion between the mechanical energy and the electrical energy is a magnetic system. So for the same, we need to have magnetizing current and it requires lagging reactive power. In induction motor, the real and lagging reactive power is drawn from the line or from the supply itself. And when we consider induction generator, the real power is drawn from the shaft. That is the mechanical input that is given through the shaft to the machine. It will be meeting the various losses in the system and the rest of the power that is given as a mechanical power input will be converted to the electrical power. So for energy conversion, in order to have the lagging power, it should be either drawn from the line itself or from the supply side or from the bus or it should be provided by using a capacitor bank. Depending on the way in which the induction generator receives the lagging reactive power, we have two types of induction generator. One is separately excited induction generator and the second one is self-excited induction generator. First we will be discussing the separately excited or line excited or grid excited induction generator. The induction machine is connected to a grid where we have a constant voltage and a constant frequency system and it is also called infant bus. The induction generator will be pumping the real power to this grid and an induction machine will be operating as induction generator when it is driven at a speed above synchronous speed or at super synchronous speed. Initially, the induction machine will be operated as an induction motor. It will be drawing power from the infant bus. We can go for DOL starter, that is direct online starter. And when the machine is running at a speed below synchronous speed as motor, the speed of the prime mover can be increased and can bring above the synchronous speed, that is at super synchronous speed. At that condition, the induction machine will be operating as induction generator and the direction of power flow will be from the induction generator to the grid. In the diagram given, we have a DOL start that is shown. By pressing the start switch, it will activate the relay coil and will connect to the grid. There is a stop switch that is given as NC that is normally closed which can be used for opening up the connection between the grid and the machine. As I had already mentioned, the medium of energy conversion between the mechanical energy and electrical energy is a magnetizing system. So in order to have the magnetizing current, there should be a lagging power that is drawn from the supply system or from the grid for an induction generator. Drawing a lagging reactive power from the grid is equivalent to supplying a leading reactive power to the grid. Because of the same grid excited or separately excited induction generator will be always operating at a leading power factor. We will now discuss the advantages of separately excited or grid excited induction generator. The variation in the prime mover speed will be having less importance when it is compared with the speed variation in the case of synchronous generator. And the frequency of generated EMF is independent of the rotor speed in induction generator. The frequency of the EMF that is generated in induction generator will be depending 
only on the frequency of the magnetizing current. That is the frequency of the grid. Induction generators can be operated in parallel with other synchronous generators. It requires only less number of auxiliary equipments. It is a robust in construction and requires less maintenance. It is having a self-protective feature or self-protective mechanism. That is, if there is any short circuit that happens in the case of induction generator, automatically the excitation that is given, that is the magnetizing current given to induction generator will be stopped and because of the same, the machine will no more be generating any power. The disadvantages in the case of induction generator which are of grid connected or grid excited or separately excited are it will be drawing so much of reactive power from the grid the magnitude of the voltage as well as the frequency of the emf that is applied cannot be controlled by the system but it is controlled by the grid itself only the active power that is supplied can be regulated by the induction generator and the induction generator will be always operating at a leading power factor and the power factor cannot be controlled by the system and the efficiency of the system will be poor. Now we'll discuss the second type of induction generator that is self-excited or isolated induction generator. It is also known as standalone induction generator. Here the lagging reactive power will be supplied by a capacitor bank that is connected to the induction generator. The diagram is shown in the slide and we can see there is a parallel capacitor bank that is connected which will be supplying the lagging reactive power and the isolated induction generator will be supplying a local load. One of the essential conditions that we will have to keep in mind in the case of self-excited induction generator is it requires residual magnetism for self-excitation. When the induction generator is driven at a speed above the synchronous speed, because of the residual magnetism, there will be some amount of EMF in the stator winding that is induced. This voltage will be impressed over the capacitor bank and will be allowing to circulate a leading current. The flux that is set up by this leading current will be aiding the residual flux and because of the same, the voltage that is built up will be increasing. The final steady state voltage at no load that is obtained from a, an induction generator will be determined by the magnetic characteristics of the machine, the capacity volt ampere and the speed of the machine. The dotted line that is shown in the figure is the capacity volt ampere characteristics and the continuous line is the magnetization curve for the machine at a particular speed. Here we have considered the speed N2 is greater than N1 and the capacitance value C1 is greater than C2. Consider the operating point 1. The operating point is corresponding to the speed N1 and the capacitor value C1. For the same speed, if you are considering the capacitance value to be C2, we will be getting a higher voltage that is given by the operating point 2. For the operating point 3, we have maintained the capacitance value as C1 itself, but we have increased the operating speed to N2. And we obtain still a higher voltage as the output from the induction generator at steady state. So we can understand that at the operating points, the reactive volt ampere demanded by the machine is equal to the reactive volt ampere that is supplied by the capacitor band. The generated EMF will be governed by the capacitive reactants at an operating frequency. Here we have the approximate equivalent circuit that is given for a self-excited induction generator. 
So on the left side we have a variable resistance that is RL dash that is shown. That is equivalent to the prime mover which will be providing the active power to the induction generator. And the active power will be supplied to R01 and R0 as the losses in the system. And the remaining will be supplied to the load that is given as RL. The entire reactive power that is lagging reactive power will be supplied by the capacitor that is connected which is given by the capacitive reactants XC. It will be supplying the lagging reactive power to the generator as well as to the load. To the generator which is given by X01 and X0 and to the load which is given as XL. So the active power is provided by the prime mover which is given in the equivalent circuit as RL dash and the reactive power is supplied to the generator as well as to the load by capacitive reactants given as XC and the active power will be divided into the losses as well as that is supplied to the load. We will now compare between the synchronous generator and the induction generator. So in the case of induction generator, we do not have any DC excitation that is required and it is singly excited machine. But for synchronous generator, there should be a DC excitation and it is called a doubly excited machine. For induction generator, the speed of operation will be always greater than the synchronous speed. But in the case of synchronous generator, the speed of operation should be the synchronous speed itself. And the case of self-excited type of induction generator, it will be generating power only when it is connected to the grid and the frequency will be depending on the frequency of the magnetizing current. But in the case of synchronous generator, it will be providing both reactive as well as active power to the grid itself and the frequency will be depending on the operating speed. The induction generator will be always operating at a leading power factor. But in the case of synchronous generator, it can be operated on UPF condition, lagging power factor as well as on leading power factor depending on the excitation level. In the case of induction generator, we, we do not have any synchronization. But in the case of synchronous generator, we should be synchronizing the machine. We will now discuss some of the applications of induction generator. It is mainly used for cogeneration operations. Cogeneration implies whenever the production is of two forms of energy, that is, it can be the steam for process operation as well as the electricity that is produced either for the plant or to sail. The induction generator is mainly used when the prime mover does not have any constant speed of operation. For example, micro hydroelectric stations, wind turbines and small capacity steam turbines, tidal power generation, along with gas engines powered by natural gas or biogas. It is also used for the braking purpose in railways, that is for regenerative braking in the case of electric vehicles. Induction generators are having few advantages such as it is simple, it is rugged in construction, it is low cost and easy to maintain or it is of less maintenance type. There is no fear of hand in operation or going out of synchronism and does not require any constant speed of operation. But there are few disadvantages. That is, it cannot be operated independently because it should be either connected to the grid or should be connected with the capacitor bank. And it can be operating only at a leading power factor condition. But most of the loads are lagging power factor type. The self-excited that can be provided by using a capacitor bank is limited because otherwise it should be requiring large value for the capacitances. In the case of large 
transmission lines if suddenly any of the loads is disconnected there can be a dangerously high voltage that is built in the system and because of the same the system need not be always stable so in this lecture we are discussing on induction generator we have two types that is self excited as well as separately excited and there are few advantages mainly it need not be operated at a constant speed and the disadvantage it will be always providing with a leading power factor and it requires some additional system for providing the lagging reactive power to the system so hope you have understood what is meant by induction generator and its operation and types thank you